my son Brian Barton disappeared. He was 25 and a half. My daughter Becky Kramer, she was 23 years old. Jesse Ross, he's our son. The missing person is my daughter. It was my husband. Our son. He was 19 years old. 25. 21. 59. The majority of law enforcement in this country are not well trained, if at all, on handling missing person cases. Their response was she's 23 years old, she has the right to go missing. They told me they were taking the report over the phone. Well, the report wasn't taken. They just kept saying no, 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 no. Missing adults mean nothing. The police are supposed to be there to protect us and to help us, not to give us a hard time. It became real to us real soon that we were going to have to be our own police, do our own searching. We organized a search, and I think two detectives might have come. And one of them stood beside me, looked around, and said, wow, this is like something you see on TV. And he was our missing person detective. I expected him to be leading us through this, not us to be training him. We've been screaming and yelling that the federal government has to try and help us on this. This bill is about adults who go missing under dangerous circumstances. Uh, it makes some minor changes in the law. Uh, but makes big changes for those families who have been affected. For me, if it had just been one case, it would have been enough to work on changing the law. But the fact is, there were many more than any of us ever realized. It will never be acceptance. This is my life. And, you know, but I'll get on with it. Some of you, when I first met you or talked to you, a common thing for someone to say would be, I can't get through this. I will not make it. And maybe the person's been missing three months, maybe three years, but you, you have made it each day up to this point. You're making it right now. So what makes you think that tomorrow you are not going to make it? My name is Kelly Jokowski. My son Jason disappeared from our home in Omaha who was 19 at the time. Like most people who have a missing family member, you don't know what to do. You don't really understand what the police are doing. You don't know what you're supposed to do. At the 10-day point, it seemed like they were starting to have an understanding that maybe something wasn't right, that maybe it wasn't just the typical assumption of he ran away, which is what you almost always get with a missing adult case unless there's some concrete evidence of something else. But when you wait 10 days, it's too late. I kept thinking, what am I supposed to do? There's something I need to do. And it just came to me that I was supposed to start an organization to assist families in the missing because we didn't want anyone to ever be in the position we were in those first days not knowing what to do. The important thing is for them to be able to keep on with their lives and in this journey, no matter how long it is, whether it's one more day or 10 more years. One of our um, cases was a young missing man named Brandon Swanson. We certainly never thought that we'd ever be in that place. Um, our, our only son, you know, I, I saw him leave that evening. Um, it was just he and I at home and he stepped into the room where I was in and he said, you know, I'm going out, Mom, I'm going to go see my friends. 
And I said, you know, Loran, have a good time. They love you and be safe. And I never saw him again. You know, when we made the report to law enforcement, we were treated as though we were overreactive parents. You know, we had heard comments that, you know, we need to let the apron strings go. <clears throat> that we were being overprotective and, you know, maybe he was just tired of us and, and uh, we needed to just accept that. If uh, he is in a field and has been, he's probably gonna be pretty fragmented, so we may be looking for real small remains. The uh, Brandon Swanson search, we've had um, 80 days of searching so far, 465 search assignments. It's a big search, about as big as it gets. Unfortunately, this can happen to any family at any time without reason, without warning. We need law enforcement to step forward and help us through that process rather than abandon us during our time of need. We've been told that often in the academies when the police go for their initial training, sometimes there is no missing person training at all. They need to have some sort of a checklist. They need procedures to outline what they should do. At the very end of the conference, they presented what's called the model legislation. What the legislation is, is it's just a checklist for the police to follow so that they follow the proper procedures when filing a missing persons report. It also takes away from the police the ability to say yes or no. Nobody has the right to decide whether or not another person is, is worthy of being found. Passing this legislation would not bring this sudden influx of missing persons cases, but what it would do would help the people that actually need to file one. I think it'll make it more of a, a checks and balances type issue. If it's obviously a state law, then, then the police department or sheriff's office or you know, whatever law enforcement agency they would be required you know, to do that. I was so impressed with that model legislation. I thought that was wonderful. So I started to research, find out, has this been passed anywhere? And I believe it had only been passed in one or two states. No one was doing anything with it. And I thought, that's incredible. And so it just came to me that we needed to find people to run with it. Kelly Jolkowski took the model legislation and began developing teams of advocates and going from state to state. It has been adopted by 10 states. We also still have some new volunteers in some other states who are getting started. This model legislation is so important. We need to have all 50 states involved in this. If a, a law is enacted, I think it'd be a good thing just to have, like I said, checks and balances. A number of people have asked Annette and I, um, will this law help you? It won't help us, but it's there to help people in the future. I describe it like a scab that you have on your skin and it's getting ready to fall off, so you start picking at it and it starts to bleed again. And that's really what it is. That's where we're at all the time. It's just always there on the surface, ready to break through at any minute, any time, you know, that you're just gonna. You yourself could disappear, and then what?